My show is called Juice and it's called Juice because of a phrase that my mum used to use which was when life gives you mangoes, make mango juice. Which doesn't really make sense. But I've said that all my life without even knowing that that's not how it goes. Recently the Beyonce album came out, Lemonade. And uh, I was like, how embarrassing, Beyonce got it wrong. But no, it turns out I've just been saying it wrong all my life. And that's what the show's about. It's about that and the relationship with my mother. Hello, I'm Suman Butcher from AsianCultureVulture.com. We're here at the Edinburgh Fringe and I'm just about to meet writer and comedian Mawan Rizwan. Mawan, welcome to AsianCultureVulture.com. Hi, thanks for having me on Asian Culture Vulture. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So, you've been at the Fringe. Mm -hmm. How's your show going? Juice. Yeah, Juice. It's going... It's really fun. Yeah, I think it's the show I've always wanted to do. I sing a lot, I dance, I rap. So it's just an excuse to wear shiny clothes and do all that really. And I get to do it every day. And that hour for me during the day is my party, you know? So I don't go out at night, I'm not drinking. I just have my party in that hour and then I go home and sleep. Okay. So wholesome. So you're a writer, an actor, a comedian, do a bit of cabaret. What's the kind of easy way to describe you? Or is there an easy way to describe you? Uh, it's confused, still making up his mind. I get bored easily, that's why I think. Uh, it's, it's really lovely because um, when I think I started out doing uh, YouTube, I started making YouTube videos and I got a bit bored of that. I was like, oh, I want to be in front of people, I want to do live stuff. So I started doing stand-up. Uh, and then I was doing some of the clubs and the live circuit and then that got a bit repetitive and so I started doing script writing and writing scripts so now I'm in a position where I do radio, I do the stand-up um, and I do cabaret numbers and it's like a real nice mix, a healthy mix of very different things it keeps me excited, you know? So Juice is a party for you but let, tell me a bit about the show, you know, are you being a comedian, are you trying to break taboos? You talk about your mom, you talk about your family, just talk us. Yeah, a bit so about it. Juice is basically about a very difficult conversation I had with my mum uh, about all the shocking things about my life that she didn't want to hear. And it's about um, what that did to our relationship because uh, I told her everything from sexuality to acid trips to eating bacon, told her everything. It was actually the bacon that made her cry. So she could handle it all, but as soon as she heard about the bacon, she had a breakdown. And it's about being honest with your parents, because, you know, I come from a lineage of lies. <laughs> you know, my parents don't know who their parents were, their parents don't know who, who, they, who their parents were, and there's just this ongoing, you know, people not being honest with each other. So I sat my mum down in, in Wagamama, and, I'd, and I told her some things all in one go. And the show is about her, how her reaction was very unexpected. So, what's your mom's name? My mom's name is Shanaz Rizwan. Mm -hmm. She is a, a famous Bollywood actress. Yes. And the show is also about that, how I accidentally made my mom famous through my YouTube videos. Okay. But how does your family feel like being material for you? Well, I do preview shows first. I figure out if it works, if it's funny, if it resonates. And then if it does, then I call them to a, a, a preview show and get their permission. So I invited my mum to the last work in progress show I did before coming to the Fringe. And uh, I, I set her up, I said, mum, there's some things that are really exposing and revealing about our relationship. You might hate it, but you know, we'll talk through it and we'll work through it. And then she saw the whole show and afterwards I was like, was that okay, mum? And she went, was that it? I thought it was going to be worse. She was like, I'll give you much more spicier things to talk about. And then she gave me a list of even more shocking things. So she's, okay. she's all right. Look, I don't know whether you're joking with me or just no, no, no. This seriously. Is, <laughs> this is genuine. My mum's the right character. You know, she's so unexpected and she subverts all the expectations of someone in, of, of, of her gender or, or her age group or her ethnic group. Like she subverts it all. So I love writing about my mum because she's an example of a narrative you don't hear about many Asian women, you know. The way media portrays Asian women, especially of her age, is so one-dimensional. So I love writing the show. For me, it's liberating writing about my family because they're so unexpected in who they are. Okay. They don't mind 
being material. But they're an extremely talented family. I know. Yeah. You're you, talented. Your mom's talented. You talked about your brother. He's talented. Yeah. Your dad. My God. Amazing. Well, my family don't mind me writing about them also because they come across amazingly in the show. I'm the loser. You know, I talk about how successful my family have been ever since I started making YouTube videos. They've all become stars. You know? And so are you. So, yeah, I know, I know. I know I'm a star, but I underplay it. Okay. So, how long have you been coming to Edinburgh? I mean, is this your first time you've come to the Fringe? First time you've had a 60-minute solo show? No, so I've been coming to the Fringe for seven, eight years now. Okay. And this is my third solo show. Uh, it's the first time I'm doing a show that's so personal. Because I do all the dance numbers, I do all the absurd stuff and the clowning stuff. But this is the first time I've um, integrated that with some really confessional, honest stories. So yeah, every, every year at the Fridge I learn something new. The first time I came up, I came up with a very straight stand-up show. Set up punchline, set up punchline. And the next year I thought, oh that's boring, I'm going to do a clowning show. And I did a whole hour of non-verbal physical comedy. I had loads of walkouts. Um, the following year I did a, a dance show. And this year is an amalgamation of all the different art forms that I've delved into and dabbled with over in the, in the previous years. But what do you hope to get from the Fringe or what is the you know, aspiration for artists uh, who are especially who are doing comedy from the Fringe? You get, a free, uh, you get loads of free beers when people come to your shows, that's nice. Uh, you, get to, you get to learn a craft, you know. You come here and you do a show every single day and audiences vary and you, you learn to really, you know, go up again and again and, and really perfect a show. The, the kind of development you get in Edinburgh in terms of timing, in terms of structure, like you don't get anywhere else because it's such a big machine, you know. Um, and also I get to see other amazing shows. I remember the first time I saw Paul Foot. I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I knew what comedy was. And then you get to see someone completely random doing something completely different and it inspires you in ways you never thought it would. So yeah, bringing something like your own show as well as seeing what it feels like doing that show in the mix of all the other shows is really, I think, nourishing artistically. So, but are you self-taught as an artist? Like, did you learn your comedy yourself? Did you go to school, clowning school, or even in terms of acting? No, so I, um, I finished uh, sixth form and uh, I decided not to go to university. Uh, that was another thing I had to have a conversation with my mum about. She wasn't very happy. I just started um, editing my own videos, putting them on YouTube, and then I started doing stand-up. Um, and then I did a clowning course. So I never went to drama school or university or anything, but I did, I did do a clowning course in France with this really old school, uh, strict teacher. And uh, yeah, every day I'd go up in front of the class and, and we'd have to go on and make people laugh. Not with our jokes, but with our, you know, natural stupidity. It was one of the hardest things I did. Cause he'd just be like, ah, get off, you're not funny, get off, we hate you. And every day I'd just go up and learn how terrible I was. Until after that, I finished the course, I came to Edinburgh with a show and I was so broken. <laughs> and I did a show and only a week into doing the show, I realized, oh, that's what he meant when he was saying that. And oh, this is how I can use my silliness to win a crowd over. And this is how I can, you know, be honest and vulnerable on stage. And then so I learned all these things. And so clown school really changed a lot of uh, stuff for me. And it's not what you think, it's not like pomp pomp clown, it's like, it's more raw than that. Philippe Collier, yeah, that's the one, yeah. And I've got many, many people here have, have trained with him actually. It's been a bit of a zeitgeisty, you know, a lot of people have realised, oh, it's more, more to it than just telling jokes, but there's something about revealing the real you behind the joke, you know? So even comedy is more to it than just telling the jokes, it's about authenticity, like being true to yourself, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if comedy was just about jokes, then you just really, you don't need comedians, you can just buy penguin bars, really, or Christmas crackers, do you know what I mean? I think there's so much more to comedy than just the joke, because when you come to see a show, you, you come to, to watch another human go through certain processes that you want to resonate with and that can include an array of emotions not just humor but also depth and yeah i love it when i see a comedy show and i and 
I don't just have a diaphragm reaction of laughing, I have a diaphragm reaction of feeling a number of things. So can I just come back to your mom? So yes. As a result they of always your... do. <laughs> Sorry. She's the star. <laughs> so she, her, your YouTube videos made her famous. Yeah. And she's still acting in the... Tell me about the series that she's in. Yeah, so... Um, when my YouTube videos started getting loads of views and I got a bit of an online following, I got a call one day and they said, you know, we're, we're calling from the Star Plus television network. We're one of the biggest networks in India. I'd heard of them because I grew up watching Indian television. So I was like, oh, this is big. And they said, yeah, we're casting for a lead role in a primetime TV series. And I was like, great. And they were like, no, no, not you. We want your mum. So I told my mum, we sent an audition off. And my mum lands this lead role in, in a drama called Yeh Hai Mohabbate. Uh, which gets millions of viewers across the world and uh, she has been in India, she's been there for five years, she's been acting in it. She recently stopped and came back to the UK because she misses her family so much and here I'm getting emails and stuff from agents and, and, and people being like, oh, can, we, can we have a meeting with your mum? What is she doing now? Does she want to act in England? And, and so, you know, there's, um, the, the world has just opened up to her because she's so charismatic and, and She's such a character. So if you want to learn more about your mum, we've got to come and see Juice at the Edinburgh Fringe. Yes. She's got an incredible story and I'm definitely benefiting from that with this show because I, I get to tell it in, the, in a way that I want to tell it. And, and she approves, so it's okay. Okay, well, my one was one. Thank you very much for talking yeah, to thank Asian you very much, Thank yeah. you. I really enjoyed the show. Thank okay, you. Now, so now